world of the bikie is violent, and often the women experience that brutality firsthand. Oh, that smells good what you, mate. Jacqueline, Metten fell for Mark Hinchcliffe, a member of the Coffin Cheaters Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. A few weeks after they started dating, he belted her. She would later say she thought it was a sign of affection. Mark Hinchcliffe and his wife Jackie had a, a very violent relationship. There was no doubt that Mark controlled the relationship as much as he could. Yeah. Oh, no. No. To control people, people that become entangled in his web, he takes control of them very quickly through intimidation, through aggression, through violence. Oh, no. Mark liked to think that he had the entire control over Jackie, but because Mark's life as a coffin shooter quite often took him away from home. It was quite clear that although Mark thought he had complete control of Jackie, that he didn't exactly know what she was up to. Jackie began spending time on the internet cruising chat rooms until one fateful day, she started chatting to a young man by the name of Michael Wright. Michael Wright was a, a mechanic over a period of six to twelve months he got to know Jacqueline up to the point where they both decided to meet. He knew very little about her personal life and had no idea that he was about to start a relationship with a married woman who had children and who was a wife of a coffin shooter. Michael Wright's online friendship with Jackie quickly became a passionate affair. And all the time he was clueless about her true identity. I believe she was probably in love with Michael as he was the only person that had shown her any compassion or warmth or anything. He was considerate. He was a gentleman with women. I believe Jackie um, wanted, wanted Michael because she, she had never had a, a, a decent relationship in her life or, or anybody who treated her with some respect. It was a very, very dangerous liaison. Mark Hinchcliffe soon sensed something was wrong. It didn't take him long to figure out what it was. Hinchcliffe had to make sure Jackie never strayed again. He beat her so savagely she ended up in hospital. Then he forced her to cut her hair so she wouldn't be attracted to other men. But he didn't stop there. She was made to place a very large tattoo on her back. The tattoo displayed the words, property of Mark Hinchcliffe. This would say if any person messed, in his words, with his wife again, then they would clearly see that they are messing with his property. He found all sorts of ways to humiliate his unfaithful wife. She was also made to do other acts such as Good dog. walk around on all fours in a video shop packed with people. To make your own wife bark like a dog in front of her own children would be one of the most humiliating things that you could do to a, to a woman. There's a good dog, Jackie. Good dog. With the wife put firmly back in her place, Hinchcliffe set off in search of her lover. Are you Michael? Mark Hinchcliffe attended Michael Wright's place of work. You know Jack? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm a fucking husband. He then assaulted Michael by punching him to the head and made him aware that he had messed with the wrong person and that he was going to be in a world of hurt. After the assault, Michael moved back home with his parents. I said to him, what have you got your sunglasses on for? And um, 
he took him up and showed me and he had, uh, he had a pretty good black eye and bruising on his back as well. With an angry member of the Coffin Cheaters involved, this was a dangerous relationship. It wasn't just a relationship breakup between two people, it was the husband was a Coffin Cheater and they don't have a good reputation and they get what they want and they do what they want. Mark Hinchcliffe wasn't satisfied with just belting his rival. He started calling the right house at all times of the day and night. Hello? It was just incoherent half the time. I could hardly work out what he was saying, but it was terrifying. He wouldn't listen to reason. I know, I know, I will. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. As soon as you want. Yes, sir. I understand, sir, and that was very, I understood that from the phone call, it was very degrading to him and he was making him say what he was saying. The entire Wright family was under siege. I mean, I used to uh, drive to work, would be car doors locked, um, I'd, I, would, I would check wherever I was, I was looking at cars behind me and in front of me, because not only uh, was Michael threatened, uh, I was actually threatened as well. The phone calls became more regular, more threatening and more insistent. Michael, he, Michael received phone calls and on, on one occasion he was sitting outside, uh, extremely upset, and uh, I went out and talked to him and said, well, what's the matter, mate? And he said, oh, he, he, um, he wants $50,000. How much? He wants $50,000. He says it's $1,000 every time I slept with Jackie. Bruce Wright decided he wasn't going to give in to extortion and courageously went to the police. It was through the bravery of Michael's father, Bruce, who made the first contact with police. Because Mark Hinscliffe was so well known to the organised crime squad, they commenced the investigation into the complaint of extortion against Michael Wright. The police recorded calls to the Wright's home phone. Bruce and Michael installed a security camera to cover the front door. I went out and purchased a CCTV, which we put a, a camera uh, in one position which would film anybody coming to the front door. Um, that we also, or Michael also wired it up um, to a, uh, a video recorder. The tactic worked. The phone recordings and surveillance footage provided police with enough evidence to charge Mark Hinchcliffe with assault and extortion. You started to feel that yes, you could breathe again and, and be a little less nervous but you still you still know that he has contacts and it doesn't matter if they're in jail or not, things happen. Michael knew he still needed to get out of Perth, but at least now he felt like he had a bit of breathing space. He did respray the car, Michael resprayed the car because he was still going to disappear up north and that was, that was then, it was so that it, it wasn't, wasn't recognisable by, by anybody who, who knew him before. There was just one remaining problem and it was a big one. Jackie Hinchcliffe was still obsessed with her former lover. Michael didn't want to see her, but she was insistent. I think she, she was still in love with him um, as such, or, or enjoyed his company because he treated her with some decency. And, and unfortunately that was his downfall. Jackie started calling and showing up at the right door. After Mark Hinchcliffe was arrested and remanded in custody, Jacqueline continued to either phone Michael Wright or attend his premises and visit him. Honey, you're not here saying she doesn't, you don't want to see me, can you just come out of here? Jackie, I don't want to see you, okay, just go away. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't want to see me, that's bullshit. No. Daddy's behind your mum, he's little chicken, you're that scared? Well, don't come back here. Come on, you little chicken chick, what are you hiding behind your mama? From vision obtained from those visits, it was fairly obvious that Jackie wanted to continue a, a relationship with Mike. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to keep on yelling until you come out and you talk to me for five minutes. She just wouldn't give up. She was like a terrier. She a dog with a bone. She wouldn't let it go. This is not fair. I don't know what to do. I feel like a fucking... It's off, please. We shut the door about five or six times. She smashed on the, the windows. She smashed on the flower doors. It took over an hour and a half or something just to convince her to leave the property. Please. Go away. I just can't 
I don't want to see you. What happened the next time Jackie came to the house was as senseless as it was tragic. Still to come on Gangs of Oz, Stephanie's glamorous life comes crashing down as the Bandito's world explodes. <laughs>